Welcome back to the Toledo Rockets podcast. I am your host, Brian Nowicki. And uh, today we're going to look at another former head football coach and his time in Toledo. Um, another request I got here, and this is Dan Simrall. Um, another one like Tom Amstutz that we recently looked at a couple episodes back. Someone that is um, really a Toledo guy, right? Been around Toledo for a very long time. So got some notes here that I'm just going to keep referring to. Um, and let's get started with it. So, you know, Dan Simrall, he was inducted into the UT Hall of Fame in 1996. He was a MAC Coach of the Year in 1984. Um, but let's go back to the beginning, and I mean like the beginning. So Simrall was born in Mercy Hospital in Toledo. He was pretty much a Toledo guy his entire life, right, um, before going on to other things. But let's start out just growing up, grew up in Toledo. He went to McKinley Elementary School in Toledo and then to Vilbis High School. Um, from there, he went on to the University of Toledo. And he played both quarterback and safety at Toledo from 1962 to 1964. He was the starting quarterback in 1963 and in 1964. Um, in 1964, he set records. This was during his senior season. He set the single season passing yardage record um, along with completions and total offense. Um, so he ended up graduating with a bachelor's in 1964. And he did get his master's in 1975, also from the University of Toledo. But so, okay, it's 1964, he graduates. What happens then, right? Um, he goes into coaching. And he started out here in 1965. He was an assistant coach at St. Francis High School in Toledo. Um, the next year in 1966, he went to start high school. And he was the assistant coach there in his first three years and then the last two years 1969 and 1970 he was actually the head coach at start high school um, again this is another school in toledo and um, he coached football basketball and track as well as being a teacher when he was at start so very busy um no doubt about it there then from there he got his um first experience in college as a coach. Uh, he became an assistant coach at the University of Toledo, 1971. Of course, back then they were known as Toledo University, but we'll just keep it as University of Toledo. Um, and he was the assistant coach or a assistant coach, an assistant coach until 1981, um, through 1981, I should say. Then in 1982, he was promoted to head coach at Toledo. And he was the head coach from 1982 to 1989. Um, we'll go into a little bit about what happened there. But from there, he went on to be an assistant coach at Memphis State in 1990. Then in 1991, he went to West Virginia as an assistant coach. And he was an assistant coach there for the Mountaineers through the 1999 season. Um, from that point, he became a head coach again, going back to Ohio, and he was a head coach at Finley, and that was in 2000, and he was there until 2006, or through the 2006 season, I should say. In 2007, he became an assistant coach at Trine University, and he was there through 2014. And then from 2015 to 2019, he was a quarterback's coach at Olivet College. So let's go back to Toledo, right? He was the head coach from 1982 to 1989. Um, eight seasons, 50 and 37 and two overall record, 40 and 26 and two in the MAC. Um, he appeared in, or his teams appeared in one bowl game. That was the 1984 um, California Bowl. It was a loss on the field, but later, um, UNLV had to forfeit that game because of uh, using um, ineligible players. Um, he did win that MAC title in 1984, his one MAC title that he won. <clears throat> okay, 
So, you know, 50 wins, um, not bad, right? But let's go into what happened then in 1989. Um, He was let go at the end of the season in 1989, and there was a lot of controversy about this. Um, UT had just beaten Central Michigan 29-6 to at the end of the season, and he became the school's all-time winningest coach. At the time, it was 49 wins um, because the bowl game, you know, in 1984 hadn't been um, changed yet at that point, from what I understand. Um, <clears throat> so he did become the winningest coach in you know, school history at that time in 1989. But four days after that win, he was fired by Toledo Athletic Director L. Bull, who came to Toledo just a couple years before then. You know, fans were stunned. They were furious. They were upset. Um, they couldn't understand why he was being fired. You know, he was a Toledo guy, grew up in Toledo, you know, played in high school in Toledo, and then he played at the University of Toledo coached in a couple of high schools in Toledo and then was coach, a longtime assistant coach um, at Toledo and then head coach for eight years. Um, and, you know, why was he fired? I mean, he had six winning seasons in eight years, but the last year the team went six and five. Um, they did win four of their last five games, so it was a bit of a rough start and they came on near the end. Um they were actually 20 seconds away from beating Bowling Green and going 7-4, and four, winning the MAC, and then playing in the California Bowl. That's how close they were to going 7-4. and four. But that loss, <clears throat> losing in the last 20 seconds to Bowling Green, their main rival, that loss dropped them to 6-5 and five on the season. And El Bull told Simro at the start of the season that he needed to win seven games and, you know, let's face it, losing to your main rival is not good either. So not accomplishing the seven wins, losing to your rival, um, even though it was in the last minute there, 20 seconds to go in the game when Bowling Green scored to win that game 27-23. Um, you know, that, that was enough. And, you know, El Bull once said this after firing Simro. He, deser- he doesn't deserve to continue as coach because his coaching was not good enough. And I had the gut to make the right decision. Our football team has to break out of the mindset of accepting the average and strive for excellence. So, you know, when you look at it, he's probably right. Um, I mean, they were average or a little bit above average, right? Um, Sure, he was the winningest coach in school history, but there were 37 losses in that eight-year period, just under five losses per season for an average, right, during his tenure. Um, The Rockets were average or above average, one MAC title in eight years, uh, you know, six and five season at the end, and that's the last season, Um, you know. A lot of second, third place finishes, fourth place finishes in the conference. And, you know, Toledo, El Bull had a vision that Toledo would would be striving for excellence and do better. Um, you know, when you look at it, in order for Toledo to take the next step, Semerl probably did need to go. And, of course, Nick Saban came in, replacing him in 1990 as that coach. You know, he led the team to a MAC championship in his one season, um, and he really put in motion what Gary Pinkle then did, taking over right the next season, nineteen ninety one, um, coaching through two thousand. Uh, you know, the MAC championship year in nineteen ninety five with the undefeated season, um, playing in the MAC championship games against Marshall in ninety seven and ninety eight, and then the two thousand year having that great season. Um, you know, just the one loss, but big wins against Penn State, uh, beating Marshall 42 to nothing, you know, um, those things all happened because El Bull made the decision that, 
um, being a average or above average wasn't good enough at Toledo. And it did take a lot of guts, right? People were upset. Um, you know, fans were very upset. There were petitions to try and get him reinstated as head coach and so forth. Um, so it t- did take a lot of guts. And, you know, he believed that Toledo could be better. And um, that's the decision that he made, even though a lot of people were upset with it. And it did turn out to, um, you know, make, make Toledo was able to make that step up to the next level and be a bigger program. Nonetheless, though, it stung letting Simmerl go. He was a Toledo guy through and through, right? His wife graduated from UT. He graduated from UT. He had a bachelor's and a master's from UT. Um, you know, he had been a teacher and a coach in high schools in Toledo before being a coach in at the university. So it really stung for him. You know, it, it stung for a lot of the Toledo, the UT community. Um, <clears throat> so then after that, you know, like I said, uh, he went on to be an assistant coach at Memphis State in 1990, and then he went to uh, West Virginia. Well, Simrel sued the University of Toledo in the Ohio Court of Claims, saying he was unjustly fired. Um, he said that UT agreed to pay him a little over $62,000 a year as a consultant, pay him for participation in the public employee's retirement system and continue his insurance benefits. And Simrel went on to say that UT reneged on the deal. So, you know, the suit was out there for about nine months or so. um, And then it was settled in the spring of 1992 with an agreement between Simrel and the university um, and with that agreement, he received $50,000 from the university. Just over four years later, the university extended an olive branch as he was inducted into the University of Toledo's Hall of Fame. That was in 1996. So, you know, a very interesting um, career there, right? He really, he... um he was a Toledo guy and, you know, again, it was tough to make that decision. And a lot of fans, a lot of people in the community didn't like letting him go, firing him. Um, he was able to bounce back on his own, right? Uh, his time at West Virginia, nine seasons as an assistant coach, and that propelled him to getting another head coaching um, job. He was the head coach at Finley from 2000 to 2006. And, you know, he continued coaching through 2019. So it's just been a few years here since he's officially retired now from coaching. Um, so, you know, he ended up having a good career still, even after Toledo. Um, he's still one of the winningest coaches in UT history. Um, obviously, people are ahead of him now. Um, and, you know, Gary Pinkle is in the top right now with 73 wins. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, he still, he won a Mac championship, um, and he won 50 games, you know, that, that's, that's still pretty good. And again, you know, you go back to that, he was a Toledo guy. And now that you look back at that time, um, you got to think like, based on what happened with Pinkle and of course, Saban that first year and then Pinkle coming in, um, and then from there, Tom Amstutz and, you know, it's just continued. Um, the the uh, level of play has just continued to um, be that step above ever since. That was probably the right move. Um, you know, it was hard to do, though, and it was hard for the fans, but it was probably the right move to move the program forward. And um, nothing against Dan Simrall, you know. He, he's even said in the past, you know, when he's been asked, like, you know, how do you feel about that? Why do you feel that you were fired? And it's like, well, I just simply did not win enough. You know, Um, again, it goes back to that average to above average just was not good enough at UT. They wanted a standard of a higher standard of excellence. And that's what we have now. You know, you look at um, 
we're talking about Jason Candle now as the head coach at Toledo, and he just won his second MAC championship. Um, but people are not really, not everybody is on board with the idea that he is um, the best coach for Toledo. And um, there's controversy there a little bit. Uh, there was controversy about his extension. And, um, you know, we'll see um, if he stays at Toledo within the next couple of years, he'll become the winningest coach in UT history. And, um, you know, two MAC championships, it doesn't get much better than that in the time period that he's done it. He's had top recruiting classes in the MAC and um, he's done well, but the, that, that standard of excellence just keeps getting higher standard, right? And um, that's why there's a lot of talk with within Candle as to whether or not um, he should keep continue to get in extensions and so forth. And um, yeah, you look back at Dan Simrel, and that's kind of when it all started, the, ch the change with the standard at the University of Toledo. So, you know, it's very interesting looking back at this. Um, and I think, you know, it's interesting. Um, so I went to start high school when I was in high school in Toledo. And um, then, of course, I went to the University of Toledo as well. But, you know, um, knowing that he, of course, this was before my time, but that he was the football coach, basketball coach, track coach, as well as a teacher there at start. That's pretty cool. Um, and then what he accomplished after that, being an assistant coach at Toledo and then a head coach for eight years. And, you know, it's still, even though he's no longer the winningest coach in UT history, he's still been one of um, the best in terms of wins, um, even though they were at a, not quite at the standard that UT wanted at the end. Um, he still had a great career there. And then he went on to have a great career in other places as well. So, and then, you know, you look back at it and he's in the UT Hall of Fame. Um, not everybody gets inducted into the UT Hall of Fame. So that shows that he really did have a great career between his playing time in Toledo and then being a coach. And um, those are the things that you can look back at and, and really, you know, really say like, yeah, um, there was controversy and everything, but look at what he did accomplish. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. And um, that's pretty much the information that I have today on Dan Simrel. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about well, about the whole situation. Do you remember when he was let go? And um, what were your thoughts if you did remember if you were around that time? And, um, you know, just let me know what you thought of the situation and what you think of the situation now.